in terms of the broad long-term vision, there's got to be three primary drivers of what the government is wanting to achieve in our transport policy. First is in terms of economic efficiency. That is, uh, transport is an absolute core part uh, of your economic resilience and the sorts of standard of living that we're able to provide for New Zealanders. Second is the objective of safety, improving the safety of our transport network. Uh, tremendous progress has been made over the last couple of decades of bringing back the road trial, uh, and there's more to be done in that space. And the third objective uh, is in terms of around sustainability. And there are some quite proper tensions that exist between how much you're prepared to pay, how safe you want to be, and how much progress you can make on those sustainability questions. Now, I'm not one of those that buys into the grand plan destination that says that you can perfectly plan out to 2030 as to portions of freight, portions of people that are going to be able to be moved uh, by rail, uh, by bus, uh, by private motor vehicle, cycling and the like. And the reason is that there are actually substantive uncertainties as you try and plan forward over a period of 20 years. The question the technology space for instance. How quickly are we able to get electric car technology to the point where it's affordable for the average citizen? I'm privileged. I'm on a good income. I drive a full electric move Mitsubishi car with zero emissions. But the truth is that car costs 75 grand for an equivalent car that would cost the average citizen about 25 grand. And so how quickly is the price of that vehicle going to be cut down to the point where the average citizen is going to be able to afford it? <coughs> Second uncertainty, how quickly are we going to be able to make progress internationally in the space of climate change? Truth is, New Zealand's 0.2% of global emissions. <coughs> yes, uh, we need to get going. We were the first country outside the OECD to bring an emissions trading scheme and a price on carbon. But truth is, that there's a hell of a long way to go that is very much a first step. And how fast we go over the next two years is going to be influenced by how much progress there is in Aussie, how much progress there is in big trading partners like the US, like China, and other countries. And the third uncertainty, which actually has a really big impact on mine, is where that price of fuel is going to go. That is, as the price of fuel increases more steeply, that will drive a harder push towards, uh, for instance, rail that is more fuel efficient than some of the alternatives. Uh, and we all know that as that price of fuel jumps around, you actually get quite big behavioural change. And anybody who pretends that you're going to be able to predict globally where the price of gas is going to go over the next 20 years is quite difficult. Now this government is committed to a mixed plan of big investment in rail, in road, uh, in cycleways and the like. Uh, we believe we've got that mix right, but it is one of those mixes that you have to regularly reappraise as those uncertainties unfold over the next eight years.